Well, uh, about the decentralization and the mini uh, miniaturization of the power grid area, uh, although the renewable resources like solar power, wind power, tides, and uh, uh, geothermal power are in inexhaustible, they, are, uh, they still have their own regional restriction, so they have, have their own suitable construction sites. In, response, uh, in responses to the different requirements of the disaster prevention, village and the region, uh, microgrids and the distributed grids are booming here. Uh, now we can see some layer responses design. Uh, uh, it, it's actually the IoT structure. Uh, you can see the illustration in the right side. Uh, we have the cloud layer, the fog layer, uh, the edge, uh, the LED, uh, the edge, and the sensors. Uh, the cloud is kind of uh, for your business decisions, a big data ca uh, calculation. And the FOX, uh, they are the local internet embedded automatic controller conduct logic responses. And the edge, they are doing the real time response and uh, make, making some e uh, easy, uh, simple calculation uh, for the real time and also uh, the edge uh, do the uh, data filter work. The sensor, of course, is, uh, uh, is uh, on, the, on the basic ground. Uh, they do the sen uh, data collection. The traditional IoT structure data processing uh, here, uh, you can see that uh, there will be a, a OS or embedded OS. Uh, it's at the device side and with the sensors. And uh, traditionally, uh, the data will directly send to the cloud, uh, to the, uh, uh, like the AWS, the Google Cloud, or the Microsoft Azure. Uh, they have the IoT platform here. And uh, the demand deployment and configuration also uh, directly sent to the uh, device, uh, sent to the embedded OS here. Uh, th there might be gateway somehow, uh, like uh, previ uh, the previous uh, page said. Uh, they will do the edge computing or fog computing here. And uh, the, the physical layer and uh, the OS here. But somehow uh, in the modern days, uh, we have the edge computing uh, coming up. Uh, so you can see at the illustration, uh, the cloud, uh, uh, the, the, the data uh, sending uh, to the cloud via the edge IoT services. So uh, they will do some uh, computation here. So it will save the time and also uh, save the storage space in the cloud. And this one, uh, uh, you can see that uh, there are four issues uh, about the cloud and the fog calculation. Uh, we have to know. Uh, we, we have to uh, solve the problems. Uh, say the delay, the bandwidth, the the network con uh, connectivity, and the privacy here. And there are uh, many uh, data resources we are facing uh, from the advanced metering infrastructure, say the AMI. Uh, we have the sensors from the grid. Uh, we, have this, uh, we have the data from the renew, uh, renewable energy sites. And uh, we also have the distributed energy resources. Of course, uh, we have some untraditional uh, uh, data resources, like the IoT equipment, uh, the home energy management system, and the electrical vehicle charging stations. And then nowadays, we have to integrate the distributed data storage pool. Uh, you can see that according to the area division, uh, the grid-related sing, uh, single databases here. We have the SCADA system, the outage management, the customer uh, relationship uh, management, say the CRM, and the billing management, and of course, the work management. And we can see that uh, uh, by the size of the, data, uh, the database. We have the single local database, uh, the several decentralized databases, and of course we will have the unified cloud data pool. And now let's talk about the customized system. Uh, we have the disaster prevention system, the village power uh, supply system, remote island microgrid system, automatic frequency conditional system. Of course we, have, we also have the UPS. So uh, the innovative technology participates in the utility services nowadays. Uh, we can see the blockchain is coming up. Uh, the AI uh, technologies like the machine learning and the big data analysis, 
renewable energy, microgrid generation, micro, uh, micro, micro power generators, and of course uh, some new transmission techniques are coming in uh, our daily utility services. And uh, uh, we can see that uh, the new technology applications here, uh, we do the prediction generation and the consumption. Uh, we also have to use them uh, for the upgrade energy transmission and, uh, and uh, utilization efficiency, and the monitor the equipment and the predict the failure, and the building and the family energy saving, and somehow uh, the peer-to-peer -peer energy transaction markets. We can, we can all see the new technology uh, coming in to the utilities. And uh, we all, of course, nowadays, we have the AI applied to the utility services, uh, especially uh, the edge device calculate the optimal path to reduce the trans uh, transmission delay and to increase uh, the uh, forecast accuracy and enhance the power grid stability. Control and manage, and manage the input and output electricity vehicle and also enhance uh, the energy utilization scalability and efficiency. Distributed microgeneration is not easy to control. Certain types of DMG, uh, the so-called distributed microgeneration, such as a, a community rooftop solar, uh, they have the higher power generation variability. Since the 2012, the wind power generation in the, in the United States has been increased, increased by 40%. The increase in uh, wind power generation is, beca uh, is because most of the DER uh, do not follow the dispatch signal, and the operators usually do not see them uh, in their system. So, so a large number of unexpected energy supply can lead to system inefficiency and to cause unnecessary circulation of other power generation equipment, such as the natural, ga uh, natural gas. Although some grid operators use complex forecasts and create a uh, greater balance to response to, ch to changes the power demands, other operation operators did not have the infra infrastructure, operating practice, technology portfolio, or regulatory structure to make them the improvements. Smart contracts can also improve the transaction efficiency. Smart contracts can be triggered manually, uh, for example, like the disaster response, or automatically, uh, like the pricing signals, to improve uh, efficiency and can respond demandly and can re respond to the demand locally. Smart contracts can automate the power transmission and contraction uh, con uh, transaction. Uh, between parties in the ecosystem, thereby uh, realizing the automatic exchange of power. The advanced application and the grid design have improved the optimization and the power supply and demand balances. Well, uh, we can see some um, establishment of the blockchain energy platform to gain advantages. Uh, taking the Atlantic Power Exchange, for the example, uh, they uh, build a blockchain-enabled peer-to-peer energy exchange platform to empower the DMG and encourage investment uh, in renewable energy. And also, um, such a future energy market is being created to allow the adoption of more distributed microgeneration technologies that can increase the energy uh, resilience while providing energy users with real energy option. This will also allow energy producers and, uh, and consumers interact directly. You can see some illustration in the right side. Uh, the blockchain is uh, working uh, all over the system. The blockchain can solve invisible problem of the power generation. Well, uh, the blockchain, it is implement if it is implemented properly, uh, it can uh, provide unparalleled visibility uh, and the tradability of energy. But with arranging the fragmentation of the electricity market, it can simultaneously meet the complex requirement of grid operation. The DMG owners can easily access the blockchain 
there, thereby uh, it fa uh, facilitating the electricity transaction. The integration of power grids and the utilities and the use blockchain enabled distributed microgeneration units can create a trusted and a secure system uh, for managing the transactions of distributed resources, including the DMG. This enables grid operators to obtain information, uh, provide them uh, with a detailed visibility to effectively manage the loads, and ensure a reliable and uninterrupted power system reliability. Uh, uh, now uh, let's see some challenges of electric uh, vehicles. Electric vehicles uh, include but, not, but are not limited to uh, the roads uh, from the railway uh, or the service and the underwater vessels. In the tradition, uh, most of the, uh, the vehicles are uh, based on the oil design. Because of the environmental pollution and the oil inventory concerns, uh, the possibility of using vehicles with other power sources has been studied, and the technology uh, is being uh, more and more mature. The number of consumer uh, electric vehicles is increasing, uh, and the demand uh, for electricity from electric vehicles continues to grow. However, the character uh, characteristics of the charging time and the location, which are difficult to master, uh, make it a challenge to manage and uh, regulate the energy transmission. Uh, so how can we predict the EV impact? The, when the EV penetration has increased, operational planning requires continuously updates, forecasts, and the charging patterns that are overlaid on the grid models. That will help operators uh, to pre uh, predict where EV impacts will occur and, and uh, adjust, adjust for it. And uh, ADMS or DMS automatically calculates the distribution uh, overloads to provide operators a visibility of the travel area in order of priority. So uh, we have to provide in inventives to the customer to charge. And how can we uh, educate the new customers? Uh, to minimize the impact of EV charging on the grid by providing incentives to, co co uh, to customers to charge when power resources are, re uh, are available. Utilities need to educate uh, their customers and then make it easy for them to participate in these three types of programs. Uh, so uh, we can see the circle here, uh, how, how can we lower the price and then we have to educate the customers and then we have to minimize the, uh, the impact. Response from, uh, from the power company. It is difficult to uh, obtain general consumer's vehicle model, charging time, and other related information. Therefore, uh, we provide flexible electricity pricing measures, uh, register uh, relevant information, and uh, uh, the electricity price discounts uh, during the low loading time. Uh, to attract the consumers to charge during the low peak hours and uh, uh, accumulate customers to, uh, and their charging data uh, and, uh, analyze, and uh, analyze the large amounts of data and the models to predict the demands. Building more energy storage equipment uh, to increase the stability of the grid and to deal with the a fluctuation in the supply and demands of renewable energy and power vehicles. The demand of a fortified grid in a cost-effective ways. In the early stage of grid planning for the EV adoption, uh, utilities need to forecast the EV demand and its impact on the grid. Develop cost-effective ways to fortify the grid and make recommendations on how utility investment will be compensated. A distribution model that are feeder levels is needed to accurate, uh, accurately determine uh, where and when uh, the grid will feel the charging impact. Existing, existing GIS-based connectivity models are not enough nowadays. So we can see some AI in the EMS. 
infrastructures uh, such as smart meters and smart grids uh, will affect the integrity of the data connect, uh, collection and, and help the efficiency and the transparency of the power management and increase the possibility of using renewable energy. Use data analysis cap uh, capabilities to optimize the management. And also, uh, the automation of AI system is particularly effective when operating routines and structured tasks. And uh, there are four elements in uh, a smart IoT. Human beings use the brain to translate and receive data into the usable uh, information. For IoT, uh, the process of translating the original data into information it is, uh, is required. In addition to the necessary network and the communication infrastructure, the four uh, basic elements uh, is to uh, form the smart IoT here. Of course, you have to have the sensor, uh, that's the source from the data. And you have to collect the data, you have to the, have the networking uh, infrastructure. And you have to show the information, so you have to have the uh, dashboard or, or any other uh, display. And finally, of course, you have to have the data analysis. Uh, the computation. Uh, you have to refine the knowledge from data to information to knowledge and to make decisions. And this is the uh, building uh, smart technology and energy saving potentials. Uh, we have the table here for your reference. And let's see more about the smart building. A building must be used uh, for more than uh, 30 to 5 years, uh, 50 years at any time. So due to the various factors such as the, the time, the social concepts, uh, related technologies and the construction uh, prices, uh, some, uh, a series of modern smart buildings are coming up here and uh, with very, very uh, new design and various uh, concepts. In today's smart building, various sensors are installed uh, to collect various relevant information including a person's various residential needs, such as uh, the general uh, household electricity, uh, the water, the gas for cooking and the bathing, indoor and outdoor uh, temperature and the humid uh, humidity uh, for the measurements. In addition to understanding the energy consumption, which is uh, currently utilized, uh, we also have to uh, perform some uh, manual remote control of the equipment even uh, achieve the automatic control. Uh, the building EMS impact on the product productivity and the health. According to the EPA report, people spend about 90% of their time indoors. Therefore, maintaining a comfortable temperature and a good air quality are very, very important. Uh, which will uh, have a significant impact on product productivity and the personal health. So indoor air pollution is sometimes 10 times more, uh, more than the outdoors. So the BEMS can improve the indoor environment by controlling and monitoring the uh, ventilation rate, indoor temperature and the humidity, and the lighting. The US study showed that uh, the improved lighting can, uh, redu uh, can reduce the incident headaches uh, by about uh, 27 percent, and the improvement of the indoor environment can increase the performance of the American workers, reduce the total health bills uh, by several uh, billions, and the, the increase the profits by 20 uh, to 1,600. So the U.S. Green Building Council reported a better environment uh, allows students to make 20 percent improvement in the mathematics-related subject and 26% improvement in the reading-related uh, activities. The integration of equipment and communication is really challenging. How can, the how can the infrastructure be smoothly coordinated with the existing lifestyle uh, to make e effective use and collected data? Distributed equipment and sensors are handled during the fault maintenance. Each hardware device has its own communication protocols, data storage methodology, code requirement to obtain the data and control the equipment method, the project design, 
uh, the construction and the cooperation of the household. So the design, uh, the, the work items, the communications are difficult for each building. There is no uh, uniform uh, standard to follow among the equipment supply manufacturers. So therefore, uh, a single manufacturer cannot have the complete knowledge of the entire smart city or the smart architecture. Although the, the vertical, uh, such as the IoT, has been, uh, has been developed for many years, the narrow speed, the connection, uh, the, they are just interrupted, <clears throat> and the various communication protocols are scattered, and there is no unified standard. Uh, which increase the difficulty and the complexity of the building system and the promoting the relate uh, uh, and also it is challenging to promote the related applications. This is the building automation protocol frameworks uh, for your uh, for your reference. You can see that it's lo lots of uh, variety uh, of each of the uh, uh, protocols uh, from the physical layer, data link layer, network transmission. Uh, session, uh, presentation, and application layers. So then, so now we can see that the different segment networks need to be connected in the building. The different protocols of the subnet integrate into the scale up network. The office network, the office network is here in the right lower part. The office network is connected to the scale up network and the firewall uh, is set up uh, for the information and equipment monitoring security issues. 